Well, hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're looking at an old 1980s personal stereo from Sanyo and this is the MGP9. And this one dates from around, I think 1986, something like that. I had one as a kid, albeit mine was red and it was a very simple device. Um, literally just has play there, stop and fast forward. So if you wanted to hear your favorite song again, you did literally have to take the tape out, turn it over, fast forward it at a guess because there was no counter on there, take it back out, put it back in and hope you'd find the right place on the tape. So it was all a bit, um, all a bit kind of basic, but that's all we could afford back in the day and we were lucky to have one at all, I guess. Um, anyways, this particular one's come in and it's really grimy as you can see, so it needs a darn good clean. So do stay tuned later in the video, we'll give that a good old polish up and I'll show you how best to do that. Um, but anyway, I bought it as not working. And a very common issue with a lot of old electronics, especially personal stereos, is that um, battery terminals are often corroded. So um, it could just be something as simple as that. So let's just take a look now. So here's the, uh, the battery compartment. It's very easy to get to on this model. I don't know if you'll be able to see inside, but a quick cursory inspection does suggest that there is some corrosion on one of the terminals there. But in any event, what we'll do is just quickly uh, Put some batteries in just to try it and see what happens so we put one of the batteries in there two and three and hopefully we'll get some power so we'll open it up and just check nope nothing at all nothing at all okay so that's that's completely dead even with the batteries in there. And we have incidentally checked the batteries for voltage and uh, they should work. If, if the uh, unit was to work, it would do off of those batteries. So the next thing is to put an adapter in there and we'll run it off the mains. And this particular one is four and a half volts and it's a positive tip on this one. Some of them are negative tips. So do be uh, careful with the polarity when you plug them in. So we'll put four and a half volts in and try again. So let's just press play now. Yep, perfect. And good resistance as well on the belt. So yep, quite a strong unit in fact, that's fine. Okay, good. So now we know that the, uh, the actual electronics work okay. I think what we'll do is we'll just get the back off, have a look inside anyway, just for a bit of fun, see what's in there. And um, yeah, just give it a clean, check the belt over and uh, clean the battery contact, see if we can't get this thing working. Well, I suppose really just before we do um, take it apart, we ought to just check to see if everything else works on the unit. So to that end, we will put some power back in now, put a cassette in and see if we can uh, get the headphone socket to work. Now to that end, I've got some rather delightful period correct personal stereo speakers here from Sanyo. So we'll plug those into the headphone socket and just make sure that we've actually got good functionality. So here's play. Yep. So the left channel and the right channel both work independently. There's a bit of crackle on the volume there. I'll just stop that. There's a bit of um, bit of crackle there, but I think actually um, we should be able to sort that either just by putting some contact cleaner through or actually what I'm just gonna do even now is just literally just work the, uh, the control because it's probably not been used for such a long time rather than over complicating things at the moment. We'll just We'll just work the, the volume slider back and forth and then... One, two. And forward in. There's the mics. There we go. So you can see this is an old demo tape of mine. But that is already... There we go. That's cured, that's cured the problem. Good. So we now know that the, um, the volume is actually okay. We might give it a cursory clean whilst we're in there. But actually, I think the whole unit just needs um, the battery compartment sorting and um, we'll check the belt, we'll clean the head as well, of course, while we're in there. And um, yeah, this one should be a fairly easy fix. So the first thing I'll do, I think, is just clean the head. So we can lose these, uh, lose these speakers now. 
and we'll also take the tape out of course. Now to get to the head on these, all we do, very simple unit, so all we've got to do is actually press play and straight away, as you'd expect, that exposes the single head just there. So to that end, what we'll do is get some isopropyl alcohol and the, uh, the obligatory uh, Q-tip or cotton bud and just put a little splodge of uh, alcohol there on there. And we just, what we do is press play and then literally just a few cursory clean, cleaning wipes across the front of the head there. And that's that bit done. It doesn't look too dirty, to be honest. Now, the other thing we can do whilst we're in this sort of position is if we partially press play, we want to clean the capstan just there, if I can get it in camera. So we clean the capstan exactly the same, just using the uh, alcohol. Obviously, this is, uh, this is the part that rotates. And then we've got the pinch roller, which you might see just coming in. Let me try and get this in shot there. So there's the pinch roller. So we also want to just partially press play and that will allow us to clean, it'll get, give us access to the pinch roller, but it will also allow us to sort of flick it around as we go. Obviously, if you fully press play, what it will do is just press it against against the actual um, capstan and then it won't it won't rotate so we've got to be there we go you can see the gunk that's coming off of there so a worthwhile process I mean it's not massively filthy and it's what's to be expected and I often wonder when I'm cleaning the uh, the pinch rollers and stuff I often wonder what music is deposited on here what people have listened to over the years so anyway that's the uh, that's better, isn't it? Get all that gunk off of there. Great. So the head is now already clean and the running gear. So let's have a look inside the unit. So this is really easy one to get into. Um, just the three screws here. So we'll just, we'll just get these off. And they are identical. Please excuse any background noise at the moment. We've got builders in next door. They might be able to tap along to the, uh, in time with the music a bit later. So there you go, one, two, and always watch out for the hidden, bat uh, hidden screws in the battery compartment. So that'll be the third screw just coming out there good right so next job all we do is gently peel away the back cover and do be careful especially on these old sanyo units because this back part here by the battery cover it can get quite brittle and quite thin and can break away so just be careful as you unclip the back anyway obviously this is a very basic unit there's no radio or anything in this so there's no antennas or anything connected to the back plate it is literally just a piece of plastic like so. So we'll move that to one side. And look how easy that was to get to the belt. It's right there, right in front of us. Super easy to get to. And it actually looks clean. It's got enough tension in there. It's springy. And just watching it through and looking at the condition of the, uh, so you can just see the, uh, the pulley there on the back of the motor. See how it's clean inside? It's not left any sort of deposit or any gunk. There's no uh, deterioration of the belt. So that is in good condition. We know that anyway, of course, because we, uh, we have already tested that part of it. So what we're just gonna do is while we're here, we might as well clean the volume part. You can see some dust and kind of uh, general sort of, say debris, but just give that a cursory little wipe. There we go. And just get any sort of physical dust out of there. And I'm just gonna literally spray the tiniest amount of contact cleaner just into the volume part whilst we're here. As it happens, by the way, this particular unit, you could have just done that without taking the back off um, because the pot is actually quite exposed there. 
Um, but obviously in a lot of um, boom boxes and, and different units, you'll find that the potentiometer is often sort of hidden away behind dust covers and stuff. So you do have to take the back off quite often. But anyway, that's just working that contact cleaner into there. Um, there's nothing else to see really. You could go through with, um, and wipe down this, the, uh, the back of the mechanism and um, grease any, any parts that might need it. But you can see that this one is perfectly fluid. Um, everything's working fine. So there's no need to start messing about too much with that. All that remains really is just to clean that contact. I'm gonna put a splash of contact cleaner just on onto the contact itself. Just because this is where we would have expected expected to start and that might actually be that might actually be enough now we look at it it might not need anything else but quite often the lime juice or lemon juice anything acidic a bit of vinegar or something like that is also quite good at getting the corrosion away um, also check out one of my recent videos on on a Sanyo um, personal stereo because um, you'll find that with that we um, we had really crusty batteries that had degraded totally inside there and um, it really was the biggest mess you could imagine and we, we managed to clean that up which is fabulous um, so quite often these things are salvageable so anyway that looks like that's a lot cleaner now um, I'm slightly concerned actually that that's all it took because um, if that is indeed the case, we may have a bigger issue because I'm surprised that that, that small amount of um, corrosion has actually stopped actually stopped the uh, unit from working. So let's take a closer look now. So I'm just going to put the back cover on again, very gently, like so. Easy as that. Now I've also got some brand new batteries out of the packet as well. So that, uh, that takes away any doubt as to the strength of the batteries. You can just obviously use a multimeter just to check for your, check for your voltage on there. But I have to say, actually, it's more like the spring placement on this is a little bit squiffy. It could be that actually, it might not be a voltage issue per se. It might be more to do with the position of the spring. So let's have a look. No, we're working. Yep, we've got it. So I think I will bend the spring back out slightly just to make um, easier contact. But I've got to say, that's working a treat now. So if I just put a cassette back in, um, and it's a bit of a rubbish tape, this one, as I say, it's just got clicking and testing noises and stuff like that on it. But I'll at least know whether or not it's working. So let's just press play. One two, one two, one, two. Perfect, so it's driving the tape nicely. So there we go. Um, basically, we've solved the issue as simple as that. All they, uh, they said was it wasn't working and it needed a quick wipe with a little bit of contact cleaner, simple. So anyway, that's the repair done, but really this is quite grotty, isn't it? So um, let's go ahead and give it a good polish. So just before we give it a clean, um, I've obviously taken the power out taken the cassette out and I just need to uh, pop these screws back in to the delicate background noise of um, a circular saw while the neighbour build his extension. So there's the third one in and just be careful of course with these old Plastic units don't ever over tighten them. There's no need to go mad when you uh, when you tighten up the screws because you'll just end up cracking them and it'll be a disaster. So, right, first things first. Then the secret to the success of cleaning, for me at least, is a little bit of polishing compound like uh, color color restorer or that sort of thing. And also, then I top it off with a little bit of um, car polish just to when um, cover up any minute scratches. And then the back plastic, things like this kind of textured plastic, if it's really bad, you can get some soapy water and a toothbrush and scrub it first, but this isn't too bad. So I'm just gonna polish it up with some um, vinyl care. And this actually brings up 
plain black pl uh, plastic really nicely. So all I need is a little bit of, uh, of shop cloth, just some soft sort of any old cloth or tissue. Um, actually, just make sure it's kind of like almost like a lint free one because you don't want to have loads of um, sort of pick up as it were. Uh, loads of bits falling off and um, little hairs of tissue all in your in the uh, gaps and in the switches. So right, watch this straight away. First thing we're going to do is just put some polishing compound. Now at this stage, let me just say a couple of things. Be very careful with vintage stickers. Stay away from those. Stay away from the um, the screen printed ink and things like that because you will have a tendency to polish them off if you're not careful. So give them a wide berth. But on these particular um, these particular models, the actual prints and the foiling and everything is actually on the reverse of the plastic. So by polishing across the front, you're not going to risk damaging the actual uh, writing or, or the decoration on the front of the cassette door. So that's just something to, to mention. So I'm just gonna go away now and start polishing, polishing the uh, finer scratches out of the unit. And I'll be back in a second, ready for, um, ready for the wax. So that's a bit of a polish up, which is a lot better than it was, a lot cleaner. But let's just get some wax on there now. And again, just be careful not to get it in any of the uh, any of the access holes or any awkward places like that. Um, we just want to just kind of rub this in and let it cover up the minute scratches as best as we can. So we'll just go ahead and do that for a minute. There we go. So that's the wax on there now. That's a lot shinier. Looks really nice and clean. And um, we've just got one more thing to do, which is to uh, dress the plastic on the back. So again, we'll just use some uh, vinyl cleaner for that. And I'm just gonna put the tiniest little amount onto another cloth. And you'll see how that starts to wet out. Now you can take the belt clip off for this if you wanted to, but uh, I think you can get under there just fine. And we just leave that to sit on there for a minute. Just rub that in. And then we'll go ahead and buff it up. And the final step in the cleaning now then is just to um, give the whole thing a gentle buff with a fresh cloth. And again, you don't need to be wasteful. I mean, this piece is literally about the size of the palm of my hand. Just to, um, just to now kind of mix everything together, buff out any little uh, bits of wax that got caught in the corners and so on and so forth. And so with that, we should be ready for some nice little beauty shots, I reckon. So here she is, all finished, and I'll just press play. There we go. She's running under her own power now, and I'll just turn the volume down a touch. There we go. So there's no crackle, no hiss out of the volume. So we've sorted that. We've cleaned the head. I uh, had a good clean inside, polished it on, on the outside, um, cleaned the battery contacts, got it running off its own power, confirmed that it works off its um, adapter as well. So yeah, we've also checked the belt and just given it a good once over really. So um, there she is. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Please do give it a like, please subscribe also and hit the bell for notifications. We've got lots of um, boom boxes, eight track players, personal stereos and stuff in various conditions. So we like to restore them, give them a, a new lease of life. So if you're interested in your vintage tech, then do please um, subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.